Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here today. My name is Larry Reed, and it's my pleasure and my honor to be the MC this afternoon for what truly is a celebration of a great life. All of us here have, uh, have met Gordon Gore or are related to Gordon Gore. Uh, before we get underway, and we've got a lot of speakers here today and a lot of cool science demonstrations, which of course, Gordy would have loved for sure. Uh, my little backstory with Gord is I first met him when I was the host of the CFJC TV Midday program. And he and Gord Stewart came on the show on a regular basis and uh, did science experiments, talked about the, the big little science center. But at the same time, Gord and I uh, formed a unique friendship. Uh, he and I both had the, had the unique uh, ability or inability for people that know us to just do one-liners. And if you know Gord, uh, like you guys did, uh, he was always doing pun after pun after pun. Well, when we would get together to shoot our segments, uh, and poor Gord Stewart, because he literally was the straight man, because uh, Gord and myself, Gord, Gord, Gord and Gore and myself, we just, for some reason, we just go off on a tangent, and we try and uh, not one-up each other, but it was just, uh, it was a friendship that was, uh, was bonded uh, through, through science, and again, through humor. Um, you know, when I was, I was reflecting today on uh, Gord's life, you know, he truly, truly epitomizes to me what a great Kamloopsian is and a great teacher because he truly cared about uh, not only the community but uh, the, the students that he taught as well. For those, for those people that don't know a little bit uh, about him, and I'm just going to say hi to Mayor Christian in the back there. Thanks for being here. Um, Gordon not only was a science teacher, but he was also uh, a teacher and, through his love of photography that took photos of each one of the students at, at the school that he taught at. And speaking to some of those students uh, over the course of the year, years that, that I've been here in Kamloops, they always remembered about how much they looked forward to the, uh, the photos that, that Gord took and, and the, the a slideshow that uh, the school presented with all Gord's work during the course of the year. So it's, it's, it's my honor, uh, again, to, to be the host. And uh, uh, I'm going to throw a little plug in, uh, a suggestion for, for Mayor Christian that I, I don't know if there's a, uh, uh, an award for uh, 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 you know, Mr. Ka Mr. or Mrs. Kamloopsian, but I would like to put Gord Gore's, Gordon Gore's name out because I think he epitomizes what the, the greatness this, uh, this city is. So. Again, thanks for being here. We're going to uh, get underway here with uh, a so, so PowerPoint put together by uh, Gord was uh, a midday guest, and so too was his sister, uh, Jennifer, and uh, Jennifer, his niece, sorry, his niece, there I knew they were all related, um, uh, his niece, uh, and she's put together a PowerPoint, so uh, go ahead, Jen. Is that on now? Okay. All right. Um, we put together a little PowerPoint today for you. Um, we want to welcome you all to, to this event. Um, it was uh, my uncle's wish that we not have a funeral for him. He really wanted to have a science show um, with some of his favorite science experiments and have people come and have fun. And this is exactly what he wanted to do. The only thing he'd be disappointed is that everybody can't be together in this room. Um, there, but there are so many people that are joining us virtually as well. So uh, we, we're happy for the science of that. Um, so we're, we, this PowerPoint is a little bit of uh, memory of his life. And um, it, in, in, during, throughout the PowerPoint, there is, I've read some of his excerpt, some of the excerpt from his uh, personal essays that he wrote. So you'll hear his own words about his life. In the early days in Strathmore and Montreal, we looked forward to winter, mainly because we could play hockey on the nearby outdoor rink. My brothers and I played the game during every available minute. I loved hockey. We walked about a mile or so to the rink, and I remember how the adrenaline would start to flow when the rink lights came into view. To me, pick-up hockey was the most fun, trying to keep the puck with 20 or so other guys trying to get it from you. After a summer or two of caddying, I became a Class A caddy. That meant I could carry two bags. When I look back at those days, I wonder how I did it. I was a tall, skinny kid, and those bags were heavy. 
I was so thin I couldn't wear a red t-shirt in case golfers mistook me for the flag on the green. The four brothers, Mike, Gordy, Dave, and Steve. Here, around the family dinner table, is Gordy, his mom, brother Mike, father, and brothers Steve and Dave. My first science courses were grade 10 physics and chemistry. Physics and chemistry were a breath of fresh air after the dreaded but compulsory Latin. I had to study Latin in grades 8 and 9. Latin is the only subject I disliked in all my schooling years. I could see no possible use for Latin. Latin was all Greek to me. Gordy's parents moved to Kamloops in the 70s, and after his dad passed away, Gordy's mom and buddy moved in with him. Gordy's mom and the infamous buddy were truly his two best friends. After mom and dad had both passed away, I inherited Buddy. Buddy went everywhere I went, sitting in the front passenger seat, looking like a human the way he sat up watching traffic and pedestrians. Buddy was great company for a loner like yours truly. He truly was my best friend and Buddy ever. In these pictures, Gordy is celebrating the holidays with Suzanne, Dave, Jennifer, and Betty May, and the ever-growing family. Gordy always enjoyed the reactions of the young ones and loved capturing his own candid shots of them. Gordy had a special relationship with his brother Mike, who was always there for him. He especially enjoyed spending time with Mike's girls, Cheryl and Linda, as they grew up. And one of his special joys was teasing Linda and her kids. Gordy's brother Steve passed away in 2020, just a few months before Gordy. As a young teacher, Gordy taught at John Oliver Secondary. He wrote, The principal, Mr. Kelly, popped in for a visit one day when I was teaching a regular grade 9 class about energy transformations. To illustrate my topic, I had collected a number of toys that involved energy conversion from one form to another. The kids were not used to science teachers actually making the topic real with examples they understood, and they loved my demonstrations. The principal obviously enjoyed my lesson as well and left me a brief handwritten note saying, you are making the subject very real. I treasured that little note. Gordy was very well known for his bad jokes, and they made his lessons even more fun. West Side Secondary School was near and dear to Gordy's heart. He wrote, one year I wanted to sponsor a team, a winning team. Then a brilliant idea came to me. I get one every 10 years or so. Why not put together a team in a sport that no other school plays? We decided to call the team the Westside Institute of Tiddlywinkers, TWIT for short. All of a sudden, the school was full of big and little twits. I, of course, was the head twit. In January of 2000, I wrote a letter to the superintendent of schools for School District 73, Dr. Terry Sullivan. I asked if a school might have an empty classroom in which I might set up a science center for kids. A quick response came saying that Mr. Bill Koch, principal of David Thompson Elementary School, would like to accommodate me. DT happened to be a few minutes down the road from where I lived at that time. Bill Koch showed me a room. Within a week or so, I had the first science center set up and ready to go. The following year, I had two rooms to use. One room I set up for a demonstration, and the other had hands-on stations. Some shows ended with a bang, caused by a film container filled with alcohol vapor, ignited by a spark from a fireplace lighter. Science is extremely important in today's world. The world needs more scientists, more technologists, more creative people. Hands-on science sticks with you. Uh, when you've done it, you, you, you remember it a lot better. I, I think we've turned quite a few kids on to science. That might not have thought of, thought of it before. Well, our current project is the Big Little Science Center, of course. And it's been operating for uh, almost eight and a half years now. Most courses I took when I was a kid, five minutes after I wrote the final exam, it was just gone, you know, because I didn't get to do hands-on science. When I retired in 1991, I was still interested in teaching science, so I started doing science shows at 
local elementary schools. I would put everything in a truck and take it to the school gymnasium and take an hour to set it up and do the show in an hour and then go home. It got a little tiring, so I thought it'd be kind of nice to have a real science center where people could come to me instead of me going to them. If you want to know how kids are doing in science in your school, in your community, find out what they do with it after they leave school. What I would say to educational leaders is that hands-on science should be part of every kid's education. It should be every day, all year. If it's done properly, it can be used to do math, it can be used to teach English, writing. So if you're short of money, spend it on equipment, not on textbooks or on multiple choice tests, which we're doing a lot of now. Uh, get the kids doing science. Science is a verb, not a noun. I enjoy doing my science shows, especially ones where I can have fun with the kids and their parents. Shows are the most fun when we manage to make kids and their parents laugh, and we do that a lot. Gordy authored or co-authored over 15 textbooks and 10 books of science experiments for youth. The popular hands-on Physics 11 and Physics 12 texts were first published in 1986, and they're still used today. Gordy received many well-deserved and prestigious awards for promoting hands-on science and founding the Big Little Science Center. The slides that follow highlight some of those awards. Outstanding Science Teacher of the Year in 1996. The British Columbia Community Achievement Award in 2005. In 2007, he received an honorary Doctor of Letters degree from Thompson Rivers University. In 2008, he received the Eve Savory Award for Science Communication from the British Columbia Innovations Council. At that time, Gordy wrote, when the British Columbia Innovations Council invited yours truly to their gala dinner to receive the prestigious Eve Savory Award for Science Communication, one of the first questions I asked after recovering from the surprise of being presented with such an award was, do I have to dress like a penguin? It turned out to be a very suitable evening. Gordy also received the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada Award for Science Promotion in 2012. Also in 2012, he received the Diamond Jubilee Award. The Governor General of Canada presented Gordy with the Meritorious Service Medal in 2015. Gordy was seldom seen without a camera in his hands. My camera is always with me when I travel by power wheelchair to the Dunes Golf Course. It is something I do almost daily if weather permits. Owner Bill Bilton Sr. gave me a key and said I could use one of his golf carts any time to go out on the golf course to photograph wildlife. I'm not a biologist, not even a proper bird watcher. I just happened to get hooked on photographing the majestic ospreys that nest at the dunes each spring. What has happened the past few years is that yours truly has become much more aware of nature surrounding us. Years ago, when I actually played golf, I would never have noticed a slight movement in the trees that was actually a deer, or the graceful movement across the sky of a very large bird with a wingspan of nearly two meters, an osprey, or perhaps a great blue heron. I probably would not have paid any attention to a moving ripple in the pond that signaled a muskrat swimming to its nest. The beautiful sound of a meadowlark probably would have gone unnoticed, as would the warning signal of a killdeer or the unique chirping of a baby osprey begging for food. Gordy was especially skilled at capturing candid shots, and these pictures were treasured by family, friends, and students. This was one of Gordy's favorite pictures of all time.
Look at the priceless expression on this young fellow's face as he reacted to an experiment done by Gloria Stewart. Gordy was diagnosed with ALS in 2004. Over the next 16 years, he continued to be a role model and an inspiration to so many from his power wheelchair. He supported the ALS Society by sharing his photos with participants in the annual ALS golf tournament. Gordy also enjoyed sharing his nature photos and his sense of humor with staff and fellow residents of the Hamlets. Gordy wrote, Every intelligent human being must wonder at times, why am I here? Often I feel depressed and lonely, but when this happens, I try to remind myself that I feel best when I am doing something or making something that will be helpful to other people. This is how many of my writing projects get started. The happiest people on earth are probably those who spend their lives helping other people. Genuinely happy people have a central purpose in life other than personal gain. These are people whose lifestyles embody empathy and genuine kindness to others. Truly happy people measure prosperity not in dollars, but in friends they have made and people they have helped. The essence and the measure of a life well spent is, in my humble opinion, kindness to others. All right, thanks, Jen. Obviously, uh, Gord has left a legacy in, in many ways with uh, the Big Little Science Center as, as a prime example of that. His love of science uh, result, has resulted in this, and of course, so many children who have uh, come to the Big Little Science Center who was, or who was taught or who were taught by uh, Gord, and them, they themselves have moved into the, the science or the medical field. Uh, to speak right now on behalf of the Big Little Science Center, we'd like to uh, welcome Annette Glover uh, to come up and say a few words. Annette. Thanks, Larry. Well, it's so nice that uh, so many of you could come, uh, especially through these trying times, but. Um, and also that we are um, showing this live as well, so welcome all. So on behalf of the um, Science Centre and all past societies, I really appreciate being able to say some words to recognize Gordy to us. Um, many of us know how many legacies he has left um, besides the Science Centre, as Larry and um, Jennifer has, have mentioned uh, previously. But I just think of the numerous um, B, the Big Little Science Center Society members that we have. And in putting this, these few words together, it made me reflect and think about that. Uh, right now, there's three of us that have been Betty Core on the, uh, the Science Center Board of Directors. And um, it's so much fun that um, I really have a hard time to let it go. I remember Gordy, for example, at the early meetings. Um, as many of you know, um, Gordy was one more to do things and action versus um, to sit around and have discussions. And so I would be, as president at that time, trying to keep to the agenda and go through the agenda. And Gordy would disappear into one of the, the rooms and come back with a new toy. And so everyone would have fun with his new toy, science toy. Um, uh, during the meeting and uh, many of the directors at that time were not necessarily related to science so they really enjoyed Gordy's toys. I think of also the past students that um, Gordy has had associations with and uh, many of them of course it was through teaching whether it was in the public education system or at UBC where he was um, teaching the teachers. And many times here at the Science Center, too, we would have, have professional development days, and he really appreciated those opportunities to work with the teachers. The um, fundamental and mandatory, I, I think of uh, Gord Stewart when kids come to visit, it is absolutely necessary here to have hands-on. And that's our philosophical belief with the Science Center here, that everything we have in the center is hands-on. And that was particularly um, highlighted with uh, Gordy's way that he taught the teachers, 
the way he wanted education done. And we really appreciate that too, because um, you're having fun as you're learning the science. And, and he liked that. And the photos that he has taken over the years definitely depict the, um, the fun that the kids have and the natural ability to learn science through that hands-on. I think also of the, the numerous students that um, have had the pleasure to work with Gordy and um, volunteer here at the Science Center, uh, whether it was um, a volunteer that is now a veterinarian in uh, Saskatchewan or the association. Um, I think there's at least two um, engineers that now work uh, through contract work or otherwise with NASA. So uh, we've had some connections with them over the years and, and that's truly due to those connections and those strong connections um, that they have with Gordy. I, I, as I said earlier, that Gordy was not one for words. So uh, I know that um, the demonstrations you're gonna see, that absolutely would be the favorite part for Gordy of today. So um, I welcome you to the Science Center and um, our, our time to reflect on Gordy, but to know that um, the Science Center will continue and. Um, and we will continue to uh, reach out with that hands-on mentality to all the kids and, um, and adults. One of my favorites is when grandparents come to the Science Center and they're able to play with the children and learn science. It's just inherent with what they learn to do at the Science Center. So thank you and en enjoy the show, as Gordy would say. Thanks. Thanks, Annette. As we saw in the uh, slide presentation, uh, Gord's effect uh, on, on people was, fe was felt not only locally, provincially, but nationally as well. We are pleased this afternoon to be joined by the retired CEO for the Applied Science Technologists and Technicians of BC, a colleague and a friend of Gord's, and we'd like to, to welcome John Leach to uh, come up and say a few words. John? Wow, coming from all the way back. Well, thanks so much uh, for the opportunity to be here today. It was uh, quite a delight when I got the uh, note from Gord Stewart saying that uh, we were going to celebrate Gordy in this way and, and how appropriate. I'm just one of many organizations and people in the community, broader community, that had a linkage with Gord and a linkage with the big little science center. I um, was introduced to the big little science center by Annette um, over a decade ago and it proved one of those relationships that it was, was enduring but also uh, a lot of fun. In addition to our professional regulatory role, our association is quite active in promoting STEM, science, technology, engineering and math. And it seemed natural for us uh, when we came to know about the work of Gordy and the Big Little Science Center that we would step up. Uh, Gordy, um, Gord Stewart, that is, uh, let me know the other day that, in fact, our association to date has contributed a little over $44,000 uh, to the Big Little Science Center, and it's delightful to see you in this new facility. One of the uh, other local events in which we were both involved was when we uh, were at the Kamloops First Nation. They hosted the, uh, an event where we uh, launched the First Nations Careers Council. And what was, in addition to the launch uh, of that day, what was particularly memorable is that we hosted a class of First Nations kids. And true to form, uh, it was one of those absolutely delightful times. It was fun, it was engaging. And sitting as one of the adults in the back row, it was really, really tough to sit on your hands and not get engaged and involved because you really wanted to be there uh, with the kids. In thinking about the opportunity to say a few words today, uh, and we all know STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, I thought, how appropriate to come up with a STEM of his own. So I came up with a STEM for Gordon, Gore, um, scientist, teacher, enthusiast, and mentor. Uh, as a scientist, we know Gord, from time to time, uh, wore a, a white lab coat. But you know, the scientist in the white lab coat came to a, 
uh, there was very little correlation between the two with Gordy uh, because he was not inclined, of course, to be in the back room uh, working in a lab. He wanted to be up front. He wanted to be engaged. As a teacher, uh, he helped breathe life into science. He got kids enthused, minds of all ages, youth in particular, uh, to uh, come to better know the, the notion that he made science real is, was so, so true. And of course, his enthusiasm and his dedication to this cause, to his, his dream, uh, was obviously very evident. And a mentor to many in this room, I'm sure, and to those who are uh, coming in online. He was a mentor to uh, uh, Gord Stewart, and, and I think uh, it would be appropriate today, and Gordy would want to say thank you to Gord. Gord picked up that mantle, he picked up the torch, uh, he provides uh, the demonstrations with a huge amount of enthusiasm. And on top of that, he is a leader in the community, uh, making sure that the lifeblood of the Big Little Science Center, together with the board, Annette and the board, um, continues to serve its, its primary purpose. So with Gord, I, I recall also uh, going back to the television, the midday show, the opportunity that uh, we had to go on the radio and on television, and I'm sure it had mostly to do with the demonstration that uh, Gord Stewart was going to put on. So for an outside group like ours, but one who believed in his cause, uh, we say thank you, Gordy, and we um, give you this STEM, scientist, teacher, enthusiast, and mentor. Thanks, Gordy. Thank you very much, John. So now, on to uh, some experiments, because as we all know, Gord was all about the experiments, and in fact, to this day, I can never, every time I see some Mentos and Diet Coke, I always think of Gord, because that was one of our first experiments, and uh, actually got a great shot of, uh, which I still have in my house, of uh, uh, Gord Stewart and myself, in, uh, again, in awe. Gord was, uh, Gordon Gord was always about the photos, right, and the, uh, and the reaction photos of, of my face as, I, as the uh, pop went 30 feet in the air, so... Now we're going to do some experiments. Uh, Ken and Colin are going to uh, join us now. And I uh, don't know if they're going to explain the, the, the uh, experiments or they're just going to do it. Or do you want me to explain? <laughs> okay, so apparently Ken's going to do an, uh, uh, an experiment with ammonia. And then Colin's going to come up and talk about Medisburg hemispheres? I'm sure I've mispronounced that. But okay. You're the science expert. I'm just the talking head. Well, it's certainly nice to uh, join you here in remembering Gordy. Uh, he was a, a master at delivering science demos. And he was also a, a master at wordplay and puns. So the demo I have chosen to remember in memory of Gord is uh, called the Ammonia Fountain. His advice was always uh, keep it light and add some color. So, here's the color. And the keep it light part is I'm not going to go into heavy explanation of how this works. It's just to enjoy. Looking at a fountain is a little bit like staring into the fireplace and watching the flames. You get mesmerized by it. You get lost in thought. So I'm not going to explain much. I'm just going to let it happen here. Ammonia gas is in here, here, and here. Water is in here. And we'll try and prime it by injecting a spray of water into the top flask. You can notice that this one is now filling. Oh, and there's the color change. Adding color. Now this one is starting. It's 
kind of fun to watch. The color is slightly different there than here. And this one's about to start. There we go. This one's kind of losing its deep purple color. takes about three minutes to complete. This is uh, mainly water in the reservoir. I added a little bit of vinegar. and a little bit of color. Notice that this one is changing color again. We do a number of fountain demos here, different kinds of fountains. But this was certainly Gordy's favorite. Leave this up front here. You can wander around later on and have a look close up, if you like. So that completes my first demo. All right, thanks, Ken. Yep. And now we're going to call up uh, Colin, I think. Yeah. Right. Very good. Excellent. Well done. Uh, Thank you, Kent. This is like my favorite demo to see. I'm over, always like so excited to see when this happens. It just gets me so happy. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I have to deal with these, and I'm always bad with the names, the hemispheres that right. we have on here. <laughs> and unfortunately, we don't have any children here, so say, which is mildly disappointing, but that's okay. I'm sure we have lots of people who have a heart of a child here, or at least uh, the motions of one. So, I'm going to need a volunteer. If you don't volunteer, I am going to steal one of you. Yeah, big round of applause. Oh, your name? James, uh, do you consider yourself a pretty strong person, James? Okay, so James, let's get you to, they go together pretty easy. Let's give a little bit of a tug, a little bit. Of, come, come on, give a good tug, come on. Okay, okay, James, let me see that. I'm not too sure why you're having so much problem. They come just apart like that. Come on, James. You can do better than that. Let's stick them together again. James, give a nice big pull. Come on. Pull, pull, ah, oh, there you go. Oh, now. Thank you very much, James. You can have a seat whenever you're yeah, there. J James, you're a little bit tricksy. You knew my tricks. And uh, does anybody know what's holding these together? What was that? Oh, that is the most common answer. And unfortunately, it is not the correct answer. Uh, suction is not really a real thing. It's just a concept that we use. It's a word that describes a concept that's very helpful to us. What's keeping these together is pressure. And not just any pressure, the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down from on top of us. All of those atoms that are pushing together and keeping us together, 
because if you were in pressure, if you were in outer space, you'd go a little bit. Uh, same thing with these. If you took these and put them on a rocket ship and took them to outer space and let them sit there, they would drift ever so nicely apart. However, you found out the trick. What was the trick? Oh, yes, you make a little gap to let air in. As soon as air come, can get in, that means the pressure on the inside of these is the exact same as the pressure on the outside, which means there's no pressure differential to keep them together. Ah, these are one of my favorites. Oh, come on, give a nice big hug. Let's, let's see. I'm going to give a big tug. Three, two. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. And you did sign that waiver, so you don't, you're not going to sue Big Little Science Center for that accident that you just? Really? Oh, there you go. Nice. Yes, you are a waiver. Nice. How can you tell he's a disciple of Gord? Nice pun. Awesome. You know, TV and pictures are, are a wonderful thing. Uh, and as I found out uh, actually on Friday when Gord Stewart and I met, we're going to go th uh, through, through the magic of video, we are going to go back through time, back to a time when uh, Gordon uh, appeared on midday, and I actually had hair. So that's how far back we are going. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jen. And here we go. The midday program is on a roll. I'll oh, be on a roll in a second here. We're at the uh, Big Little Science Center with Gordon Gore and uh, his faithful uh, cohort, uh, Cy, joins us. Uh, are you going to do a little leaf blowing here or what? Well, uh, we're going to do a little demonstration of the Bernoulli principle. When you, when you speed up air, you create a low pressure area, and that will make this toilet paper rise and maybe do something else. This is actually how you get toilet paper to an elephant, because they, they need a lot, right? Do you believe that, Cy? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> All right, you like being the assistant here, don't you? Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, here we go, uh, Gord. <clears throat> this is a leaf blower, and we're going to create a very high speed here, here we go. We're gonna find the switch first. <laughs> and poor Marty, the camera person, is all tangled up in yeah, toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need our own camera. Well, I guess uh, is that that's literally a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> you want to add, Gord? It was doing a wipeout. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm. it, Marty was wiped out. Cy, what do you think? Oh, the best I've seen at work. <laughs> All right. Our thanks to Gordon Gore <laughs> and Cy from the uh, Big Little Science Center, making science fun. Uh, the Big Little Science Center located out here in West Side. Liners. It was always good when I could actually one up him like I did there. It was one of the few, t rare few times I was able to do it. So I think now we, we're going to have another live demonstration. And so we'd like to call up uh, Dave. Gord's going to do something after Dave. And Susan Hammond will be here as well to do something. Uh, Dave, you're going to do uh, flame tests? Flame tests. So we'll just get started here. Gord, as you see, did a great job of popularizing science. In these days, we need all the help we can get. There are some people with strange ideas. End of sermon. Okay, one of my favorite things is something I learned first when I started chemistry donkeys ages ago were flame tests. If you spray certain elements into flames, and it might help if we could have the lights down, please. Oh, down, 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 if possible. Well, let's see how it works. Oops. What color? Red. Now, some of you are agog, of course, wondering what the science is behind this. It's because every element has electrons. You heat up the 
molecule, the electrons go to a higher state, then they drop down, they give off energy in the form of light. That was the element strontium. And here's a very common element. <laughs> copper. And you've all seen probably when you overheat copper, if you're soldering or something, you get green flame. That's the reason. Very common one. Oops. That was sodium. Have you ever seen sodium lights in the cities? Of course you have. Um, it's one of the major forms of lighting. This one is not quite as bright. This is potassium. But you see the lovely lilac colored flame you get from that. And of course, this one is usually pretty good. This is, wow, wow. strontium. What practical uses? Fireworks, that's certainly one of them, but you can use them for other things as well. That's how you get all these colors in Canada Day. So, chemists are known for making fires and explosions. I'm not going to make an explosion. I'm going to make, though, a very nice flame. What I have here is a very finely divided powder, like a podium powder. You blow it into a flame. Ooh, Ooh that, you want it again? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Dave. Uh, you're fired. <laughs> Couldn't resist. You learned these puns from Gordy. Yeah. Yes, I did. All right. From Dave, we move to uh, Gord Stewart, who is going to do uh, an experiment on electromagnets. And uh, I have to say, from a personal standpoint, I couldn't think of anyone better to continue the legacy of Gordon Gore than this man right here, Gordon Stewart. Uh, they, they formed, Im immediately when they met each other, I think they, they, they formed a great bond, and Gord Stewart carrying on the uh, tradition here at the Big Little Science Center. Uh, nobody better to do that. So uh, thank you, Gord, on behalf of everyone. Well, thank you, Larry. Um, actually, I changed up the show on him, so he didn't know. Um, <laughs> is that electromagnetics? I'm gonna show you um, what I learned from Gordy about how to actually pour sound into a glass. So you have a few steps to it. First off, I'll show you that we can actually make sound easily just with nice big flames, a couple of tubes here. Now, I'm going to hold them over here. Trick is I have to wait till my hands start to smoke. So it'll take a minute. We'll see how it goes. Is that a minute yet? It's getting hot. Okay, here we go. So that's to prove we're making sound, but it's all escaping. We want to keep some. Whoop. Okay, we want to keep some of that sound for a second or two in a glass. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this sound, we're going to get it going here so it's nice and hot, and then I'm going to pour it into the glass for us. So we get a nice glass full of sounds. Make sure you look closely so you can see it. And then I'm going to pour it back into the tube. Think it's hot enough yet? Eh, feeling warm. Okay. So there, we got the sound. Okay. Pouring it in. Yeah, it's about full. Don't want to spill any. Okay, I'm going to put it back. There we go. Just like that. You can pour sound. Okay. Now, how many people actually believe I just poured sound into the cup? Anybody? <laughs> okay. So obviously it's not, that's what the principle here. What I've got is a screen inside here where I can store up a little bit of heat and as the hot air moves up through the tube, it creates some resonance, you get this nice sound. So if I turn it sideways, can the hot air go up? No, so it's all I can say, I'm pouring it now. 
And then you got to time it going back the other way. And once the air starts to move, you get the resonance scan. So it's a nice little one. You can leave it and not explain it, or you can try explaining it. So that's a little bit of how to pour sound. All right. Thank you, Gord. The Big Little Science Center has had a number of great people and continues to have a number of great people uh, as a volunteer or as an employee. Gord, uh, the two Gords are, are two of them. Another one is Susan Hammond, who is going to come up and uh, do a demonstration. Elephant toothpaste? What's this all about? Well, Larry, elephant toothpaste is an example of Gordy Gore's great humor because any way he could involve students in their imaginations, he did. Discrepant events were fantastic. Demonstrations where they had to try and explain it, even if they were wrong, that was his attitude. It didn't matter. Get them thinking. Get them being creative. And elephant toothpaste is a great way to get them imagining a whole world out there beyond the walls where they are now. And involving the students as much as possible. You're talking about staff and other members. This is Connor, one of our ongoing staff members who have been helping us for a few years now in the summer as well as through the, the, the year. So he's going to help us out. We're going to do a few different things, mix some chemicals together and see what we can do. Now, this is a graduated cylinder, and you all know why it's called a graduated cylinder, right? Because it finished high school? <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, so Connor's going to mix up some chemicals. Number one, we're going to throw in one of our favorite ways of creating bubbles, and kids love bubbles, so we're going to throw in a good bit of dish soap and hope that that's going to make a bit of a fun reaction. Now we're adding in another chemical. It looks like water. There are lots of different uh, chemicals that look like water. And getting kids to realize that, you know, just because it looks like water doesn't mean it is water is really critical because it's going to change their point of view and, and being safe in the world. And now we've got a lovely blue mixture in there. And we're going to add in a bit of a solid, a mystery white powder. And now... We're going to be able to polish any elephant's tusk that's out there. <laughs> and you need lots of bubbles. And just imagine the size of the toothbrush you would need. And you get a color change, and it just keeps on going. It's quite fantastic. Thank you very much, Connor. You get a little bit of extra things. Susan, good job. Thank you very you much. You know where the elephant puts the toothpaste? In his trunk. There you go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I think the prerequisite <laughs> to be here is... Yeah. Thanks, Gord. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to have another a video from the archives of uh, Midday. Science Guy is uh, here joining us once again, and Gordon, I'm really excited when you're always on the show because uh, we always do lots of great experiments, and uh, what do you have for us today? What are we doing? Well, you'll get a real charge out of this. this well, literally. Is, I, I, the this electricity is static, in the air. Static electricity. This is the famous Van de Graaff generator. It's actually a model of the real thing, which is about three stories high. Uh, it was three stories high. Mm -hmm. It was used for accelerating part nuclear particles. I'm just going to show you that it is charged. I'll turn it on. There's a belt running here which rubs against a cloth drum and uh, that produces a charge. I can, I can feel it. You may even feel it over there. I don't know. I think it's probably... I see your, the, your uh, hair on your arm standing up. Yeah, it's starting to charge now. So what kind of wattage are we talking about there? I don't know what the wattage is not very much, but the, the voltage is very, you mean the voltage, I guess. Yes. It's about half a million volts, which sounds terribly dangerous. It does. But uh, the current is extremely small. Just to show you its charge, so you can see it, this is a little, little electroscope. You can uh -huh. see it's obviously charged. Dome is charged. Now, these are some of the most popular experiments, aren't they, when uh, kids go to, the, to a science center? Oh, well. this is the climax of any science show. Um, the Van de Graaff is very handy for classroom use because in some parts of British Columbia, they actually have rain, you know, like, not yeah. like here. And they can't get a, a charge on, using the usual methods. So the Van de Graaff is a big help to them. Um, one of my favorite demonstrations are flying saucers. These are flying saucers here. And this is gonna. This is their home base. 
It's a round top, so I have to tape down the first one, otherwise they all slide off. Okay, there's our launch pad, if you like. Uh -huh. And here we go. And here's, here's a few flying saucers, potential flying saucers. Here we go. One more. I see a few lids are going to be flipped here today. That's for sure. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, what's going to happen? Let's see. So they're like, oh! Holy cow, look at that. We have liftoff. We have liftoff. Those, those are your flying saucers. So, <laughs> so what, are we, what are we learning here? Well, we learned that uh, if objects have the same charge on them, they repel each other. Right. That's, uh, that's the main thing you learn from this. Um, another interesting application of this, well, if I want to uh, take the charge off, I just touch it with something like this. A coffee can works well because it has lots of grounds in it. Grounds, charge. That's right. Good one. Now, this you is and I are reading the same joke books, obviously. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and that's a bad sign. So you're giving it a toupee there? I'm giving it a toupee. This is a rabbit's fur, and uh, I use this for producing static charge sometimes. But I always tell the, the, the uh, people at my science shows that I'm going to bring the rabbit back to life. So let's bring it back to life here. There we go. Here's a, this is definitely a hair-raising experience. It, it is, you know, more ways than one. <laughs> and he's back to life. There you go. Wow. Sometimes it flies off. When you get cracking, you literally get cracking. That's for sure. Static electricity cracking. Okay. Okay, so are we ready for the piece uh, de resistance? We have a volunteer okay, here. Yes, our lovely assistant today, Kara Byers, usually behind the camera today, folks, working in front. Thanks for uh, submitting to this, Kara. Oh, no problem. This could be revolting, I'll warn you. <laughs> well, I hope you're taping this because you might want to see it later. Yeah, I see a, Chris, a segment in the Christmas party Thank video, you. folks. You know, we knew you had an electricity, you know, electricity when you're around, Kara. This, is, this that's, now proves that's, it. That's definitely working well. You have the right kind of hair for this, that's wow. for sure. Okay. okay, so how long is it going to take Static. Kara's hair to go back there? I know well, it's actually, tough, it's, it will probably stay that way the rest of her life. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. No, not really. I'm going to, don't, don't step down yet. I'm going to turn it off. Okay. And if you take your hands off and stay on the, you're, she's standing on a, a, plat, a styrofoam platform, so she's insulated. Mm -hmm. And her hair will stay that way until the charge leaks away, which it won't do on a dry day like this. So if, if the whole floor was made of styrofoam, you'd stay like that all day. But as soon as you step down... Then her hair. And, no, not it's quite. So semi returns. Still normal. a little bit insulated, but it'll go away eventually. Maybe about four weeks, and then it'll be gone. Not really. It'll be gone in a few minutes. So, Gordon, I guess uh, people in the audience looking at that going, ohm, ohm. Because today's, cause today's <laughs> experiments, of course, electricity. That was electricity, static electricity. and. Uh, Excellent. Well, thanks for so joining we, us. That's about all we have. Yeah, so okay. you're going to take a few weeks off and, and join us later, I would well, imagine. That's, that's up to you guys. Yeah. Well, okay. it was fun. Thanks Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Gordon Gore, of course, a former science teacher actually here in the Canwoods District, our, our science guy. When we come back, we'll talk about the Canwoods Interior Summer School of Music, that and a whole lot more. You're watching TV7 Midday. Or it always fun. Okay, now we're going to go back to some more uh, demos, and uh, Spencer is going to come up and uh, talk about ma and do an experiment on magnetism. You are. Thanks. All right. So as Colin had already alluded to, we don't have any kids here to help us, but I need two volunteers for the thing I'm going to show today. And I get two people that are willing to come up and show that maybe they're super strong. I'll do it. I'll be back. All right. So I'm going to get you to two. The two of you do is try and get the two ends of these mystery sticks to attach together. What? Can you get them together? Are you not strong enough? What's going on? There's some magnetism here. What? All right. Thank you so much. So as Larry mentioned, there are magnets inside here. So if I try and put them together, it wasn't because they're not strong. It's because there's two magnets in here. And because they're the same pole, that means that they're not going to attach. But if I attach them, the two that are opposite, then I can get them to go together. 
So Gordy loved magnetism as one of the favorite things that he likes to show. So that's why I wanted to demonstrate this one today. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Spencer. Now Ken's going to come up and do a second experiment. Water to wine, milk to beer. This sounds interesting. And expensive as well. During these COVID times, we've all had to take on different roles. So I'm not very good in the kitchen, but I can mix some drinks. So I'll play the bartending role today. And as a starter, Getting all mixed up here. I don't know where that went. Uh, I'm going to start with some magical fluid to mix all these drinks. And it's got a pretty fancy formula there. Uh, we have this on tap, by the way. <laughs> it's actually made in Kamloops, uh, purified in Kamloops, uh, the nice state-of-the-art plant on Lawrence Street. And I'm going to use uh, a chemist's favorite glass to start with, a beaker. One of the magic things about bartending I discovered is that for the right kind of drink, you have to have the right kind of glass. So that's good for water. Oh, did you understand that this was water? <laughs> it's H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O or H to O. Okay. And here's the magic. You got to use your imagination a little bit. But here's the magic. Water into wine just by the choice of the glass. Okay. Water and wine. You're not terribly impressed. Well, you may, <laughs> may want to use a little color. Oh, that's a kind of a, a blush wine. Okay. I discovered that the reason the wine glasses are always tulip shaped is that so adults can take the glass and kind of play with it. They can swirl it around and be entertained by all the little swirls they get. But they also tell me that by swirling it, you aerate the wine, and so it gives a nice bouquet. Well, I don't know if that's right or not. This is not a wine glass. This is a glass for a nice cold drink of milk. Oh, 2%. Okay. But finally you want to end up with a little more powerful drink. And so we'll turn milk into, oh, it's even got a little bit of a head there. Oh, interesting. You can imagine that as being either ginger ale or some kind of a pale ale. There. 
Now, the hands-on part of this, Gordy liked to do hands-on things. These drinks are hands-off. <laughs> okay. But the hands-on part of it will be, in just a little while, we'll have refreshments and so on. So, no matter what the shape of the glass or what your choice of beverage, raise your glass and remember Gordy. Thanks a lot, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Okay, Gordy, do we have time for some work or some? Oh, really? Okay. So, are we just going to come to you then? All right. Without any further ado, to say uh, some more uh, comments about uh, and stories, anecdotes. I hope uh, about Gordon Gore, Maybe. Gordon Stewart. Just a little bit. I think we're right on, sort of on time. We're a little behind. A little bit behind. So I'll just. Um, I'm the executive director of the Google Science Center. If you haven't met me already, I met Gordy uh, 16 years ago at a job interview for the executive director of the Science Center, along with a few other very intimidating people. It was fun. I got to uh, pull the wool over their eyes, told them I could do the job, and they hired me. So 16 years later, this is where we are. Now. Um, <laughs> We'll turn it off. Sorry. <laughs> just on Gordy's side of things, uh, with he loved science, and with me, um, it was a learning curve to get used to his style and his drive and passion for science. Um, he, it was great to learn, and the biggest thing I liked about with Gord, working with Gordy was he'd come in one day with some toy or gadget from the local toy store, and he'd plunk it down and say, "I want to film this this thing. We're, we're going to do Sorry. this about it." I'd be looking at it, trying to figure out quickly in my brain so I could sound smart what exactly he was going to do to demonstrate physics with that thing. So one of the weirdest ones he brought in was this little slide that these pen penguins slid down. So you have these penguins, you see, look at the penguin slide down this thing. I'm, yeah, okay, yeah, and trying to figure out why he was gonna, what it was going to explain. It turns out it was, it was ran on batteries, it was energy transmission, there was gravity, a whole bunch of other things involved in there. So it got to be quite a fun experiment and a, and a fun demo. I used to look forward to those events as it went along to see Gordy come in with his new idea, new plan, how to show something old in a new way. So I think it's my best memories of him was when he came in with something new from the toy store. So he was always good at that. He was always good at making it hands-on and something you could do at home and you could take it home with you and try it out or you could go to the store and buy it. Or you could use the coffee can to do it. He did a lot of things out of coffee cans, not just for the static purposes. He loved making coffee cans, duct tape, things like that to create new, new things. So this center is his legacy. It's his idea of having a hands-on interactive science center. It was, it's unique in, in the world, pretty much. Other science centers have actually, believe it or not, people don't know other science centers have come to us to look at the techniques we use for the hands-on side of things and start expanding into theirs. So we're kind of a leader in the world on that side of stuff. So I don't want to take up all your day talking about that. Um, just a couple things of note about that. We've got a fund we've started. It's a Gordon Argor Legacy Fund for the Science Center, so you can See more about that later. Talk to me about that, where people can donate to that fund, and it'll help keep the core operations of the science center going forward. And that's the plan with that one. The VC Interior Community Foundation. We've also established a scholarship in Gordy's name with that organization. So we're trying to build up some funds there, so annually there can be a Gordon R. Gore scholarship going out to a needy person in the Kamloops area. So those are a couple of places you can help out. Because Gordy's wish was that you no know, bring flowers to have a science show and help the Science Center survive and go forward. So that's kind of think what this whole event's about, and showing, seeing the science fun that Gordy always liked to do and wants to see going on. And I think it's up to us here in this room and others to push that on and keep it going forward. So I think that's about it for what I have to say. All right, thank you very much. Gord Stewart from the Big Little Science Center. We would like to thank uh, you for coming here today and honoring uh, the memory of Gordon. And uh, for all those people watching, uh, uh, wherever you are in the world, thanks for, for uh, honoring the legacy of Gordon Gore. Uh, that concludes our formal portion of uh, this afternoon. There's going to be some snacks and in the back, and if uh, we, we'd like to have you uh, enjoy that and, and share with each and every one of us uh, you know, your stories uh, of Gordon to celebrate uh, his memory. Thanks a lot for being here. <laughs>